How's it going gang? It's a final render here and welcome back to Fallout 76 Permadeath. This is episode 6 this video and I'm really looking forward to getting into this video today. What a lovely day to be in Appalachia, right? It's raining and disgusting. Brilliant. Why don't we maybe go and take some shade here? So, some cool things I want to talk about before we actually start this video. At the time of recording, last night, the very first episode of this series went out. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Me and Psycho Girl were there as part of like the live preview. And it was really cool to see some of you guys watching it and genuinely really, really enjoying the series. It's really cool to know that you guys genuinely enjoy it. Because I had this idea and I thought, oh, it's probably not going to do very well though. People probably aren't going to like it. But people seem to be really, really enjoying it. So... Thank you very much. I mean, this is obviously episode 6, so it's going to take a while before you guys actually hear me say that. But hey, thank you very much for enjoying the series, guys. I really mean that. So, what are we going to do today, then? Well, we have a few quests we can do. Primarily, we've got one, which is to go to the Gawley Mine to go get Crane's treasure. Now, that seems like a good idea. However, one of the prizes you can get for that is a really good, I believe, anti-armor hunting rifle. And that's level locked. And right now we're level 12. So realistically, if we did that, we'd get one that's a level 10. And I'd rather wait until we were level 15 before picking up that rifle. So what I think we should do is do some of the original main story quests. So we can get some levels and hopefully go back and get that at level 15 where we will have a better rifle. So what are we going to do then? We have got to go and study Dr. Hudson's research over at the AVR Medical Center. So why don't we get on and do that? It's going to be interesting because this is one of the more dangerous locations. We're going to actually go into the ash heap now or just on the edge of it. And that can be dangerous. So let's go. Here we are at Poseidon then. Good little place to go and kill some Scorch and stuff. Get some you know, XP and things. And also you can do the powering up Poseidon event. And get yourself the plans for the generators. Pretty cool. But we've got to be very careful here because... There actually is a Grafton monster spawn right down there. Very, very dangerous at this early stage. Poison attacks and stuff. We really do not want to be messing with a Grafton monster at this stage. Even though it's a very weak Grafton monster, we don't want to be involved by that thing. So, let's just take out a couple Scorch as we go. I mean, they're suspicious of something, but they don't really know what to make of me. So, let's just see if we go behind these tents. We actually are using the Fantastic Revolver rifle right now. The Revolver rifle is actually a really good gun because they're quite common. So you're very likely to have a lot of mods for them when you're playing this game for the first time early on. And it means you could probably end up with a better gun than, say, a hunting rifle. But of course, our plan ultimately is to eventually upgrade our hunting rifle to something a bit better. Get him in the body right there. And then in the stomach. Fantastic. So it's not as powerful as, say, a hunting rifle or a bolt-action pipe rifle. But it's still pretty good. It uses 45 caliber ammo as well. So we actually have lots of it. Okay, so I believe the Grafton monster spawns kind of over there. Which is a problem because we're going over, like, in that direction, aren't we? We're going to that blue building. Hmm, I wonder. Should we just jump down and go for it? Can we see the monster? Hmm. I don't see him as of right now. He normally spawns like over there or over there. So, I think we could just go for it, I guess. I mean, it's a bit of a drop, but we'll be fine. Drop on down here then. Okay, we're good. Like, I was watching part one with Psycho Girl last night, as I mentioned, and she kept commenting that I keep jumping off of high stuff. <laughs> so, I need to be careful not to do that. Because if I get hurt or killed just by falling off something, that could genuinely be a problem, couldn't it? Alright, so AVR is just over here. Oh, radiation over there. Nasty. We do have a lot of liberators which spawn in this building over here. There's like a train yard. And there's always lots and lots of liberators over there. But liberators actually aren't that dangerous considering we're mostly wearing leather armor. And leather armor has really good energy resistance, of course. Okay, let's just make our way up this little stairwell here. And then we can get all the way to AVR. Now, AVR... It's full of Scorched, you know, nothing that we haven't dealt with before, but there are quite a few of them. You need to make sure they don't get cornered by these guys. There's normally a couple patrolling on the outside also. Oh, we've also got a Raider over there, a Raider Scum. Oh, okay. So he's actually a bit tougher than some of the other ones. I wonder if we can maybe hit him with something a bit more powerful, like the hunting rifle we've got. Do we not have a better hunting rifle than that? I could have sworn we had like a modded one of some kind. I guess not. Okay, never mind. Let's just go for this, uh... Let's just go for this scoped shot, then. If I can find it on the hotbar. Here we go. Oop, just missed there. I thought he was going to keep walking. 
Body shot there. And he's dead. Excellent. So what's this raider got, I wonder? Hello, mate. He's got some... Sur he's got a syringer? What a lame-ass weapon to find right there. Okay, well, he's got a syringer. Isn't that fun? Right. Scorch time. Quite a few of them over there. Let's do some sniping here. All right. That was a nice one-tap right there. All right. Not a one-tap, that one. That was only 26 damage because he's a bit further away. But a second shot will finish him off right there. I think that's the majority of the ones in there. Oh, no. One right here as well. Hello. Nice. So this quest we're going to do, we've actually got to go and get a lot of the stuff ready to make the inoculation for the Scorch Plague. And that actually will take us into the Ash Heap a little bit, if I remember correctly. So this will actually be quite a dangerous new step for us. We also don't have any gas mask equipment. So we've got to be on the lookout for something like that, like a hazmat suit or some kind of breathing apparatus. Now, I do have stuff in the atomic store, which can give me that extra breathing. Oh, I'm over encumbered. That's annoying. But what do you guys think of that? If I use the Atomic Store to buy something like a gas mask, which I've already got, is that okay? That might be pushing the line a little bit. I'm not certain. Let me know in the comment section. But for now, I'll assume that that's not okay ahead of time. I've answered a lot of questions about the series on the first video in the comment section. But one thing which kept coming up, of course, was the issue of legendary perks. Now, obviously, I've got all the slots for legendary perks. And that's pretty sweet. And I do think... It is worth using legendary perks, but only when we hit level 50. Because, yes, it's true that I have all the slots unlocked from another character. But I got a feeling that might give me an unnecessary edge. But when I hit level 50, I will use one of the cards. I think that's fair, you know? And then when I hit level 100, hypothetically, we can put a second one on, etc. But for now, we're not going to use any until we hit level 50. So let's go. AVR, here we go. Alright, we've got multiple levels of Scorch to deal with. But they are just Scorch. So if we can keep stealthy, then we shouldn't really have a problem. Oh, that was my Discord, if anyone was curious. <laughs> uh, I, I always forget to turn off my... Oh, there it goes again. I always forget to turn off my Discord. I really should when I'm recording videos. Because otherwise, I guarantee it really annoys everyone in the comment section. Okay, uh, level 10 automatic pipe rifles are starting to spawn. All right. Might actually be worth using these. Especially if we encounter super mutants in, like, Charleston and stuff soon. Because when you get automatic pipe rifles in this game for the first time, that really does change up the meta quite a bit. Because typically by that stage, you'll have lots of ammo to use with them. And they genuinely are pretty good against these lower level enemies. We are a little over encumbered though, aren't we? So we might leave it for now. So it only does 14 points of damage right there. And it's not silenced, of course. Eh. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it for now. We'll keep it for... Actually, no, we've already got that submachine gun, haven't we? Forget it. Forget everything. Forget everything I said. I'm a moron. Leave me alone. Right, so we've got more in the canteen area over here. So, yeah, this was just like a pharmaceutical company, I believe. Hello. Oh, are you in there? There you are. Hello. We'll shoot you right in the crotch right there. You didn't need that thing anyway. But, yeah, I think this was just like a pharmaceutical company. So it obviously has all of the equipment we need to synthesize a cure for the Scourge Plague. Because the first responders, they worked it out. But they all died before they could actually start manufacturing it. But they did all the actual science to manufacture it. Ooh, we got a pie machine over there. Pie machines, as far as I'm aware, are literally based on your luck. So I'm pretty certain we're not going to be able to get this. Like, I know Psycho Girl, she always has maximum amount of luck because she's got a very high luck character and is always bloodied and full unyielding. And she's got, like, maybe over 50 pies. I'm not kidding, over the course of two years. She's got a huge amount of those perfectly preserved pies. We didn't get one this time. Ah, oh, well. All right, so we've got to drop down here, haven't we? I don't think there's any more bad guys in the drop directly below us, but where's a good place to actually land? Got a few above us still, I think. Let's see if we can land on one of these generators. I'll soften the landing a little bit. There we go. And no one heard us. All right. We do have a little storeroom in here. I forget what's in here. Oh, hello. But I think it's pretty good. I think there's like adhesive and stuff like that. So we should probably try to break in here. It's a terminal, isn't it? Ah, it actually is a hacking terminal, which we, which we have the card for. <laughs> I'm so excited we actually get to, uh, we actually get to use this now. Okay, here we go. All right, here we go then. Now, we do have to be careful when... Well, never mind. I was going to say, we do have to be careful when hacking these terminals because this is an online game, so time isn't paused when we're doing all this. 
Yeah, let's go check out this uh, room in here. Then what have we got? There we go. A pack of duct tape. That's fantastic. Anything else of use? We've got a little toolbox here. It's got some gears and stuff and a blowtorch. Okay, it, it's not that exciting. Not that exciting at all, in fact. But, ooh, great box. Yeah, it's only got a stim back. But yeah, so nice easy XP, I guess. And we do get some, some tape right there, so that's really good. We're gonna go behind these generators over here, I believe. Yep, down here. Hello. Oof, right in the spine. And now, of course, we're in the science lab. What have you got on you there? Oh, you got some 44 and some... Oh, a shotgun. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And there's a big old chest here, which has got some steak and a flare gun. Hmm. Flares, if I remember correctly, are completely worthless in this game. They really have no real use at all. All right. So what's on this medical laboratory terminal thing? So, in order to actually make our inoculation, we need to go get some DNA from certain types of creatures. Ooh, we just need to get a fuse, which we can put in the wall there to actually turn on the machine. So, we need to get a blood sample from a feral ghoul. Okay, shouldn't be too hard. Let's do it. Also, remember to take advantage of the chemistry station in here. And there's lots of good junk in here, so loot absolutely everything, and then scrap it before you head out. <laughs> Why not, right? All aboard the hype train, it's the Charleston train yard. Oh, ho, ho. oh, that's fun. All right, so this is where we go and collect the fuse in order to repair the machine in there. And as I said, there are liberators in here. Yeet. And they've seen me already, so that's fantastic. There's an op optional objective to go in via the front main gate. I don't know why that's an optional objective. It seems a bit strange to me, but whatever, you know, let's do it. Maybe it'll help in some way, give us a little bit of an advantage. I love these little liberator bots, don't you? I want a pet one, you know, when the uh, when the pets inevitably come to Fallout 76, I would love to have a pet liberator. You know, that'd be super sweet. Okay, so there's the optional objective done, I guess. <laughs> Let's head over here and just go grab our fuse. Well, hello, mate. I see you. I see your little toesy woesies. Are you going to let me in or are you just going to creep around all the time? Hello, mate. There he is. Nice. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. So in here, I presume then, or on his body? It says right here. Unless it's below me. Could be below me. Yeah, the fuse is directly below me. Oh, that was confusing. All right. Is there a way to drop down safe? Oh, hello, mate. Is there a way to drop down safely for where I am? I could have sworn there is. There's like a little stairwell here and stuff. Oh, yeah, the dude's bike. Uh, if you actually read some of the notes and terminals and stuff, there's a dude always complaining that he keeps bringing his bike into the office, and it's still there. So, you know, survive the war and stuff. Yeah, by the look of it, I've got to go a different way to go down. Oh, well, that's probably why it was the optional objective, right? Yeah, it sure is dark in here. Hello. There we go. Nice shot right there. See, these guys actually aren't that hard. You know, unfortunately, they do have a little bit of a problem, which makes them quite easy to kill. And that's that, technically, their main body is all technically a head. Because of the way they're designed, you know, their main body is also their head. So therefore, pretty much any body shot counts as a headshot against them. That's unfortunate time to be a liberator, I suppose. And then there, ooh, grenade, that's pretty good. And also some raider gear, level 5 gear, left leg. What's on my left leg right now? Muffled leather, level 10. Oh, I'm definitely not doing that. I'm definitely going to keep what I've got right now. Hopefully we get some really cool, like, legendary weapons and armor and stuff soon. That's what I'm really looking forward to. Oh, and there's a weapons bench over there. Oh, I wonder if we can actually mod any of our guns at all. Here we go. Type T fuse and some duct tape and loose screws. Oh, and, and a desk fan just to top it off. Man, bravissima. That was absolutely fantastic. All right. I want to go check out that weapons workbench then. Can we do anything to our guns? I'm addicted to this stage of the mechanics now. I can hear Liberators outside, and they're locked in, in fact. Ooh, I'll tell you what. Seeing as they're locked out, let's go check out the weapons bench now. What have we got? All right, so we do have a shotgun. We can actually modify that a little bit, I believe. We did get a new barrel or something like that, but I don't really think it's worth it, so to speak. I mean, we need Gun Nut 3 to put the suppressor on, and even then, we might have moved on from it. Hair trigger's good for now. I like that. Yeah, I think shotgun's pretty much as good as it's going to get, unless we can get a proper stock. But we need Gunsmith 3 for that, which will take quite a bit of leveling. And the hunting rifle, as I said, we can mod it and stuff like that. But realistically, I think we're just going to wait until we get the anti-armor one when we're level 15. I mean, we'll keep it on us for now, just in case we need it. But we'll leave it, the actual modifications and stuff off. 
However, this one can go away, can't it? Let's grab that down. Severe receiver. Is that better on our shoddy right there? It is much more damage, but it's less fire rate. Ooh. I kind of like the fast fire rate of the hair trigger. Yeah, all right. We'll leave it then. So the next objective is to go and get a blood sample from a feral ghoul. It's actually marked some right there for us to go. We don't have to go there. We can actually go to any location that has feral ghouls if we want to. So why don't we just fast travel to AVR and then go shoot a ghoul in the back of the head. It'll be sweet. Oh, ash heap discovered. Here we go. So the ash heap, very dangerous location. I must say, some of the stuff in this challenge, which I'm really not looking forward to, and some of the stuff in the ash heap, i.e. the lion low quest line, is going to be very problematic. And I'm sure you're going to say, of course, Render, that's the imposter sheep squatch quest. That's not what I'm worried about. Because when it comes to doing encrypted, I'm totally fine with doing that online. Because it is an online game, that event is designed online and stuff like that. And there's no rules in this challenge saying we can't go online for stuff. So that's fine. But what I am worried about is that one quest where you've got to go to Beckley. Because Beckley is full of gutsies. Honestly, I am more scared of robots in this challenge than any other enemy type. More than Scorch Beasts and stuff, robots, especially Gutsies, are going to be the biggest problem, I honestly think. Assaultrons, yeah, but here's the thing. You can run away from an Assaultron. Gutsies have got, like, super armor piercing, though. Let's take out these mutants. These are, like, the first set of mutants we've seen, I believe, isn't it? Maybe the second? Wow, okay. Really not very accurate at this stage. Really need to get some more rifleman perks, don't we? Yeet! Okay, there we go. Good damage, though. Good kills. 39 XP. All adds up. Let's go kill a feral, then. There's a bunch of them living in these apartments by Charleston. Now, we've got to be very careful here, because you can also... There we go. There's our ghoul dead. You could also spawn snallygasters around here. And I ain't ready for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for snallygasters up in here. Well, just be careful. You know, creep around and stuff. And where's this damn body gone? Where has he gone? Did he fall in there? Oh, dear. You're alive, aren't you? There you go. I knew you were alive. You said, oh, no, 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 no. I didn't mean to fall down in here. Well, thank heavens that's all it was. Just the one feral ghoul in there. Oh, dear. <laughs> that could have been very, very bad right there. Are any of you guys just making sure you're all dead? Yeah, okay. I think we're okay. Let's get out of here before we do something stupid like that again. So we're back in AVR. Let's install the fuse into the fuse box. Excellent stuff. Put the blood into the centrifuge. Excellent. And then just give it a spin and we get ourselves an inoculation recipe. Analyze our blood sample. Cycling. Separation achieved. Commence an analysis. Analyzing. Analysis complete. Data forward to the sympathetic unit. Ready for inoculation. Excellent. So now what we're going to do is jump in this machine. And we can't slowly die of poisoning from the Scorch Plague anymore. We have been inoculated. I hope you lot have been looking forward to or have had your vaccines for COVID-19. Oh! Ooh. <laughs> I do shot pump action shotgun for doing that. That's fun. All right. Uh, let, let's see with this. The, the thing about, um, about two-shot shotguns. I know at one point they were definitely the meta for two-shot shotguns, but in Fallout 76, they've actually now made it so that a two-shot shotgun is not actually two-shot. It's 1.25 shots, because at one point, two-shot literally was two shots, you know? And it was OP as hell, especially when you combine that with explosives, so TSC explosive shotguns. So now it's 1.25 rather than two-shot. But that doesn't sound very exciting. But even so, we're, we're still going to use this gun. This gun's going to be brilliant, you know? Our first decent legendary weapon. Nice. Okay, let's go put the mods and stuff on this. And then we'll get ready for the new quest. Which is, of course, to join the Fire Breathers. That's fun. And we can listen to the Overseer's broadcast, which has just come online. Broadcasting to the people of Vault 76. This is the Overseer. We need to talk face to face. I've missed all of you, but this isn't just about a reunion. We have work to do. I'll be waiting in Sutton. There we go. So the Overseer's camp has now been added to the game. You obviously get her added to the game once you research the inoculation. However, we can't actually do anything with the Overseer until we hit level 20. That's kind of the main meat and potatoes of the Wastelander DLC after that. 
But that is level cap to level 20. And rightly so, I think, by the developers. I think that is a very smart thing for them to do in order to ensure Wastelanders is fun. Because there's a lot of special checks and stuff like that. And if you're level 1 going into that, you're not going to be able to pass any checks. And it won't be very fun. But we have actually got lots of plans to go there once we hit level 20. But for now, I think doing the Fire Breather stuff might genuinely be a really good thing. So let's get ready to do that after we've modded some of our weapons. Oh, hello. Just spawned on my camera. There's some Protectrons down there. Ooh. Let's get some shots on these guys before they follow me into my camp and shoot me when I'm sleeping, etc. Well, they're tough cookies, aren't they? Okay, uh, let's try out my submachine gun. Because there's quite a few down there. I've even got some grenades. Throw a nade down there. Nope, did nothing. There we go. Okay, that's a machine gun. It, it's alright. It could be better. Oh, hello. Still an eyebot right there. A level 12 eyebot. Yeah, recoil control on this thing is very, very difficult, as you just saw right there. <laughs> but hey, I know. I've played a bit of Counter-Strike. I know what's up. Alright, let's go and grab some of the equipment from these guys. Yeah, so some good XP at least, I suppose. Let's head, to, head into the camp. Hello, Solomon. How you doing, matey? Nice to see you. Okay, so weapon workbench time then. Let's go. Let's go and mod this shotgun and make it really, really good. So first thing we need to do is scrap our original shotgun that we had. Um, actually, this new hunting rifle's have got a bit better condition. So let's do that. So yeah, uh, shotgun then. Where is it? This one here, the hair trigger pump action shotgun. Pretty darn good one. But let's go and scrap that down. And we don't have a stabilized stock for that. Pretty cool. So, oh, hello. Hello. Solomon, please. Please. There's rats in here. Help me. Help a bro out. You know what I mean? Right, here we go. Oh, happened again. <laughs> please, try harder next time. Sorry. You know what? In fact, you know, in fact, I'm putting a door on this thing. I'm putting a door on this and I am locking it. <laughs> There, it's locked. Now they can't tunnel in here, for God's sake. <laughs> Typically, I would never tell you to put a door, a locked door in your camp because it stops people from seeing your camp. But seeing as I'm playing offline, it's fine in this case. So, hair trigger receiver. That'll make it much quicker to shoot. We'll go and give it the true long barrel. That's always a really nice one. You know, it actually is just the best one in stats, I believe. You know, just go and put that on there. And also, we have got... Oh, we got the stabilized stock. That is not locked behind Gunsmith. Okay, sweet. Let's roll with that. Start sights. We really don't need sights on this. Suppressor. We can't add a suppressor regardless. Look how big it is. It's filling up the entire screen. We can even put a skin on it if we want to. Hey, that looks all right. That does, actually. Yeah, go on then. Go on. We got 32 oil. Let's put a different skin on it. All right. So there's our TST shotgun. Oh, not TST. Just, just T. <laughs> our T shotgun. Our shot T, if, if you like. <laughs> yes, I did it. Did you hear that joke, Solomon? It was great. And we've just leveled up by cooking stuff. Oh, isn't that fun? Okay, let's go and level up then. Level 13. Get out of my bed, Solomon. That's mine. Okay, I've decided. We're going to go for an extra rank of agility because that always helps with our sneak. And also, we're going to max out Action Girl. This will give us rank 3 of Action Girl. So we get action point refresh speed. 45% faster than the default. That's a really nice thing to have. And of course, having high agility is always good for our character anyway. There we go, you see? Looking fantastic. Let's go and get all of our buffs and then get ready to join the Fire Breathers. I suppose really, before joining the Fire Breathers, the Overseer's House is literally just there. We'll get some markers for exploring some locations and maybe we get XP just for meeting up with her? Probably not, right? That would be... A bit too easy, but let's see. We've got the robot vendor here. Ooh, has the robot vendor got anything good? Like any good armor or weapons or anything like that? A power fist. A level 30 power fist. Well, that's fun. And a level 30 railway rifle. Well, we're definitely not going to... Ooh, gas mask. Okay, excellent. We definitely needed a gas mask, didn't we? Are they different at all? Uh, they all look kind of the same. I mean, does a surgical gas count? Probably not, right? Uh, let's go with the... Let's go with the one with the goggles. That one, I think, is cool. But then again, Sack Hood, does that count? No, it doesn't. Let's go with the one with the goggles. I think that's my favorite one. 
Oh, we got a scaver over there. Hello, scaver. Wouldn't it be a shame if someone <laughs> shot you in the back of the head? Lol. Oh, right in the eye. And then in the neck. Ouch. Well, free XP right there. Hey, XP is important right now. Well, she has a 10 mil stim pack and an actual... Oh, a metal chest piece. What's that got in it? That's a 10 metal chest piece. Weighs 5.5, 20 ballistic and 3 energy. Oh, but I'm actually wearing one which gives me endurance, aren't I? Nah, okay, forget that then. Forget that. Sorry you died for nothing, love. Well, XP. So it's not nothing. Hey, it's an important challenge. No one will be spared. <laughs> I have discovered Sutton. Ah, oh, 22 XP right there. So this is the Overseer house. Lovely, lovely house. Looks really, really nice. I mean, she definitely spent some atoms on this house, didn't she? Ooh, look at this font on the map. Disgusting. Okay, let's go on inside. See what's up. Oh, thank Hello, God overseer. You're here. How are you almost... doing? It's just so good to see you. Let's talk downstairs. Cozy as this place is, there's someone I'd like you to meet. We really went overboard with this place. Feel free to look around. There we go then, yeah. So I spoke to the overseer and she just said she says get to level 20. I mean, that's fine, but I was kind of hoping there'd be like some free XP just for turning up because, you know, 76 likes to do that sometimes. All right, so we're obviously not going to be doing new arrivals for quite a while. Let's go and join the Fire Breathers. That's going to be good fun. She's also given me markers to go to the Toxic Valley, which I don't think we want to do for a while. That place be dangerous. Right, here we go. We're in the ash heap now, just on the edge of it. And there is the fire station to join the fire breathers. And uh, we've got a scaver here, so shot in the head. Thank you. Free XP. Let's go join the fire breathers. Now, I love the fire breather quest line. I've always said something I would absolutely love to be kind of a future update for the game is that some of the original factions start to come back. You know, the free states start to come back and stuff. The fire breathers start to come back and things. That would be super cool. As much as I love, you know, the Brotherhood of Steel and stuff like that, we've seen them before, you know? Let's get some new ones in. They had a gas mask in there. Damn it. <laughs> Here we are then. So to join the Fire Breathers, we've got to do their training quest. Now, the training is actually pretty simple. You know, you just got to do this exam to start off with. And... Going back to what I was saying, there actually is a human responder now here, so that's pretty cool. But let's go do these questions. Now, these questions are pretty much always the same answer, so very, very easy to do. And let's go and answer these questions, so let's go. The tunnel you're traveling has begun filling up with a strange gas, and you're without your breathing apparatus. What should you do? Evacuate as quickly as possible. That's a pretty obvious one. Okay, so whilst traveling a smoke-filled building, your breathing apparatus has failed. Which of the following will serve as a best replacement? A water-soaked rag. That's actually true as well. Good advice here. One of your fellow fire breathers has been burned. The area is painful to the touch, but no blisters are forming. You applied a cold compress. What's the next thing you should do? Gently bind the burn with clean bandages. Again, correct bit of thing. I was a boy scout. I know this stuff. Whilst exploring a collapsed mine, your team member, your team leader flashes their safety light quickly three times. What does that mean? It means retreat immediately. One of your squad mates has caught a case of sludge lung. Ugh. Which of the following sets of ingredients, when cooked together, can be used as a cure? Now, this is something which just basic knowledge of, like, fire safety isn't going to help you because it's made up. But the actual answer is purified water, two ash rose, two blight, and two soot flour. There we go. Let's go do that. And I believe that's actually the um, the ingredients for the disease cure of the ash heap. So that's pretty cool. And then the final one, you've stumbled upon a band of... Oh, is this the last one? You've stumbled upon a band of scorched, diseased people brandishing clubs. Which is the following and only acceptable method of engaging them? Well, this one is to fall back and engage them with firearms. So the game's actually teaching you how to deal with the scorched. And then here we've got, you've captured a scorched, infected man who you recognize as a childhood friend. What do you do? You end their life as mercifully as possible. Okay? And those are always the same, and there's always only one answer to every question. So there we go. That is that done. And now we need to go do the physical exam. Ooh. I've just remembered what this physical exam is. Okay, the physical exam involves going into Charleston, I believe. Oh, no. Is this the... Uh... Oh, I know what this is. This is cool. But don't forget to loot the gym for all the lead weights, of course, because eventually we'll probably need to make ammo. So let's take all the lead weights we can. <laughs> so we need to head into Charleston for this one. Charleston, obviously, big city. Pretty important location in the map. 
And yeah, Charleston is famous for having lots and lots of super mutants in it. So we really got to be careful. There's also Snallygasters in here. Very dangerous as well. I wonder if we can see anyone. Oh, there we go. Right there, a Snallygaster. Oh, level 13. Disgusting. I mean, they've got a very nasty long-range poison attack. So if we can avoid them, that would be ideal. Because stacked poison could very, very quickly end this run. So let's be super careful here. There's our way down here. Oh, okay. Oh, I don't know if we can actually get down here safely. And Snally's over there. Let's wait for Snally to move on. I don't think Snally is moving on. Okay, uh, let's think about this. We've got grenades equipped. All right. Could I maybe just give it a go while he's next to that car? You know, blow him up. Two grenades out there. Okay, I didn't kill him. Did good damage, though. Did half his life. And then we can finish him off up here. You know, I think we just crippled his brain or something because he couldn't see us. Ugh. First cryptid of... Oh, dear. First cryptid of the game dead. Cool. Now, there's a bunch of them in this town. So, I don't think we've killed the Snallygaster. There's lots of Snallygasters. In fact, over behind that building over there, the Charleston Capital Building, Grafton monsters can also spawn. So dangerous overall, this place. So yeah, this place, Charleston, wasn't actually destroyed by the Great War. It was destroyed by David Thorpe, who was the head of the raider gang, the Cutthroats, I believe. And he is the boyfriend of Rose, who we know in the main game. And it's very tragic, actually, because Rose had been kidnapped, or say, captured by the first responders, and locked in prison here in Charleston. However, David Thorpe believed that the first responders had killed Rose. So he blew up the dam, flooding the entire town and completely destroying it. And killing everyone in the town, including Old Rose, who he thought was already dead. So, yeah, problematic there. But anyways, let's go inside and do this physical test. Now, this is a kind of like a time trial race through Charleston. And Charleston's super dangerous. Super dangerous. So we've got to be real, real careful around here because we could run into mutants and stuff. Are you alive? Yes, you are alive. Shoot your face off right there. Shoot it off. Shoot it off. And now, I think we might be able to do this challenge without sprinting, question mark. But let's give it a go, shall we? Right, let's activate the terminal. Initiate the physical exam. So yeah, let's see how quickly we can do this. I like to do it sneakily, but if we're running out of time, I'll start sprinting. They actually give you more than enough time to do this challenge. So let's get ready to go. And... Exam there we go. Activate Hit the button. And then away we go. So you're supposed to be sprinting throughout this, I think. And it's very action-packed and stuff. And it's very cool, you know, ducking and diving and things. But I don't think you need to do that. So I think we won't. I think we won't. I think we'll stay safe by creeping everywhere. You know, cut through these rooms and stuff like that. Save us a little bit of time. And uh, we've got a bit of a drop here. So don't sprint off of the drop. Otherwise, you will hurt yourself. Oh, actually, you know, doing this creeping. Oh, hello. Wow, okay. Never mind. Forget that then. Oh, boy. I've gone the wrong way already. So how are you lot doing, you know? You're just strolling. Hmm? Just strolling through Charleston. Doing my physical exam. Ah, Snally right there. Okay. We've got to go through this guy. So, a couple grenades on there. There we go. That was good. Alright, shoot him in the body. Shoot him in the body. Swap to the old shotty. Okay. We dropped him. That's good. Alright, let's sprint a little bit. Get away from there. Heal up a little bit. That wasn't that bad, actually. He did hit us with one of the poisons, but the poison wore off surprisingly quickly, actually. I remember them being much more dangerous. Maybe I'm just used to, like, glowing snally gases and stuff like that, not like little level 13 ones. So that's cool. The Charleston Capitol Building. Here we go. We'll be doing a lot more quests here later on as well. And this marks the end of the physical exam. Checkpoint. Activate. Now we've got to go all the way back. So, you know, it goes around in like a big circle. Oh, hello, mate. We've got a couple bad guys here. So let's uh, machine gun them down. 
Okay, getting a little stuck here. Woo. Man, I love the pump action shotgun in this game. There's something really satisfying about it. And the fact that they actually made it so that you can half load it in this game. You know, that was very nice because it took a long time for... um. In fact, that didn't get fixed in Fallout 4, did it? With the lever action. You just spawned out of the wall. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, scripting it a little bit, I think, to try to make it a bit more action-packed on the way back. But this has gone surprisingly well. I oh, actually, I'm running out of time. Oh, my gosh. I, I need to hurry up. My God. Wow, we actually failed the quest. Hmm. Well, that sucked. Okay, so by the look of it, you can't just creep your way all the way through it. I thought you probably would have been able to, but no. I mean, we did stop a couple times, didn't we? So maybe if we never stopped, we would have been totally fine then. But let's just do it again then. We'll do it again, and I'll cut back to when we have finished it, unless something really exciting happens. And through the power of video editing, we have made it back. There we go. All right, so job done, people. We have actually completed the challenge. I mean, that is what I got to hit, isn't it? Is this not right? Oh, I didn't hit the thing. I'm a moron. And through the magic of video editing, we are back. There we go. Exam time, 1 minute 46. So yeah, actually a pretty easy challenge, especially once you have learned the route. But that is the physical exam for the fire breathers done. So next thing we have got to do is initiate our final exam. Right, so we're deep in the ash heap now, pretty much on the way to go and do this. So let's pop on our gas mask. If you don't have a gas mask, then, you know, you can get ill and stuff, breathing all this toxic air, unfortunately. It's not a good idea. All right, so we just got to head up this hill over to the Bouncing Betty, or the Belching Betty, I should say, sorry. You know, Belching Betty, the mineshaft. Here we go, then, the Belching Betty. Let's go on in here. We've got the uh, markings right there for the first responders. And hello there, Bernie. Applicant detected. Ticket issued. Please collect your gear. There we go. So he gives me a ticket, which dispenses the equipment I'll need for this training exercise. He gives me a fire breather uniform, a helmet, some 10 mil ammo, and also an anti-scorched training pistol. So this is a gun with a scorched receiver. 25% damage against scorched, but 20% less against everything else. Genuinely not very good, this gun. I'm not going to lie. We've actually got much better weapons than that. And the thing about it as well is that it's automatic. So we don't even have any perks to make it better right now either. So we're just going to leave that for now. We'll go with the regular weapons we have got. But do we actually need to put on our outfit and stuff? Let's see what it's like. Uh, the outfit and stuff is literally just for show by the look of it. It doesn't actually affect you at all. And also something which I kept thinking I need to do is that I've always had this Pip-Boy display open. I should really have it so it's this screen, shouldn't I? Because if I have it as this screen, I can see threats coming towards me when I'm in my Pip-Boy. I really should have done that sooner. But now we just need to go and listen to the holotape, and we can start our final mission. Here Welcome we go. Recruit to your final exam. I'm Hank Madigan, Fire Breather Lieutenant. Exam simple. Reach the bottom of the mine, hit the emergency beacon down there, and come back up. Sounds easy. All you gotta do is survive a little slice of living hell and all the scorch that call it home. <clears throat> now, I get this is extreme, but we need to know if you can hack it before you got half a dozen other people counting on you. But you're not going in empty handed. Along with your suit, you've been issued a modified 10 millimeter. We figured out the scorched aren't big fans at depleted ultra site. Took a field trip to AMS HQ to figure out how to make the stuff, but it's the most effective tool we found for putting them down. So time to prove you can put it to good use. Suit up, strap in, and move out, recruit. Yes, sir, boss. I'm a fire breather. Let's go.
Here we go then, into the Belch and Betty. All right, so let's go for it then. Let's open up this thing. And we just got to get to the bottom of the mine shaft. Now, there are like some things which you can do to kind of explore the lore and stuff. There are some dead fire breathers in here and you've got to, got to find out what happened to them. But you don't have to do it as far as I'm aware. So, let's have at it, people. Right, so, avoid the fire on the floor. Like, this is such a cool location. I remember coming here the first time and being just blown away. At how cool all the smoke effects and stuff look in here. It's really, really cool. And it's realistic as well. You know, mines set on fire all the time. You know, especially like coal mines and stuff. Very, very dangerous place to work in a mine. Ah, so this is what I'm talking about here. We got some of these, some of these responders here. He's actually got a submachine gun. Huh? I don't think we'll use that. Not, at, not actually a very good gun. You know, very, very low damage. Yeah. The red light is on, so it's recording. <clears throat> this is Maxine Ballard, squad leader of the Scorch Slayers. We're making this recording to document our descent into the Belching Betty mine for the final exam. Well? <sighs> okay, squad leader. Tim and Andrew are both dead. Now what the hell are we supposed to do? Shut up, Sai. She's recording. Entry two. We've lost Timothy Wolf <clears throat> and Andrew Rhodes to a swarm of Scorched. And the rest of us barely made it past them alive. I'm beginning to think Melody Larkin may have underestimated the difficulty of this exam. Oh, you're damn right she did. This is suicide. What the hell with this? I'm going back. No, you're not. You're sticking with us. Why? So we can get picked off one by one until we're all dead? No way, not me. You know what, Sai? You've been acting like a coward ever since we started tackling the Scorch at the farm. And now, Tim and Andrew are dead because of you. What the hell are you talking about? I saw him, Max. When those Scorched pushed through the tunnels, they came at us from all sides. <clears throat> Tim and Andrew were holding, and they told Sai to watch the back, but he didn't. He ran away and left their rear flank wide open. That's what took them down. Bullshit! She's lying, Max. I'll both of you knock it off. Sylvester, if you want to go, go, but you're going back alone, and I guarantee we didn't clear everything behind us. But even if you make it, mark my words, you'll never be part of this squad again. Fine. To hell with both of you. I'm out of here! You're seriously letting him go? Yeah, Rita. We're better off without him. All right, interesting stuff. So yeah, this uh, this little squad got ambushed pretty much the second they came in, and one of them actually ran away and got the other two killed. Very very nasty stuff. Right, so we do have a little workshop up here. Ooh, we can actually we can pick this, yo. We picked a useful perk. Okay, it's in a perception, isn't it? Yeah, go and take that off now. We do have some weapons and stuff to scrap and things like that. So let's go. Like, weight encumbrance is generally becoming an issue with this character, I've noticed. We need to get a backpack, don't we? We need to make our way to the Toxic Valley and do the, uh, the scout stuff. Open says moi. There we go. Right, let's remember to uh, take that perk off and put Concentrated Fire back on. And we can scrap some of the weapons and stuff we've been picking up. I'm just going to scrap that 10 mil. I'm not going to use it. No offense, guys. I appreciate the, the thought of giving it to me, but I'm not going to use it. Here we go, let's grab some shotguns down as well. Fantastic. Lots of bad guys down here. Just guarding this last little area. Oh, hello. Yeah, this uh, this gun is starting to not really cut it anymore, you know. Like, it's great for sneak attacks. It really is. But it's not really doing very well in a one-on-one -on -one gunfight, is it? Right, he's dead. Fantastic stuff. And this is the button we've got to hit. So we hit this button to prove that we have completed the exam. Oh, and here's part three of their journal. Entry three. Sylvester left the team some time ago. We heard a scream, echoing. Applicant task successful. Return to surface for examination completion. Sylvester left the team some time ago. We heard his screams echoing through the mines only minutes after he left. <coughs> Rita, 
Rita and I are all that's left. And despite the odds, we've somehow made it to the beacon. What's supposed to happen when we activate that beacon? I don't know. I suppose we'll get Melody Larkin's next instruction about how to get out of here. Well, there's no reason for us to stand here and wait. Push the damn thing. Oh my god. They're everywhere! I... I don't know if we're gonna make it. But we didn't come this far just to give up. I'm with you, Max. If we don't make it out of here, I just want you to know... It's been a real honor, Rita. Likewise. Now let's go show those scores what it means to be a fire breather. Woo, fire breather. Okay, I don't know how they couldn't get out, really. It generally didn't seem that bad. Maybe there was much more Scorch when they were doing it. I don't know. But yeah, so that is the Belchin Betty done. All right, let's get out of here. Return to Bernie and become a true fire breather. Oh, Bernie. Hey, buddy. Look All who's alive. It's me. Gandamu. Congratulations. Issuing. Orientation hollowed date. Please proceed to Charleston Fire Department for company registration. Ace, we did it. So now we just got to go back to the uh, fire station to fully sign up for the f for the fire breathers, and job is done. Okay, so register with it. Go on then. I can't be bothered to walk all that way. <laughs> So we're back in the fire station. To complete our objective, we just got to go and tell the captain, who is obviously not around anymore, that we have completed our training. Let's use the fire breather master terminal. Register a new fire breather. Job done, people. So what's our next quest then? What's our next objective for Into the Fire? Listen to the priority message. Ooh. Let's give this a bit of a listen. Priority message is over here on the actual emergency telephone line where the fire department would have got the calls. There are 800,000 outstanding support calls. Oh boy, there is a lot of calls. one priority call accessing. Maria, Melody, whoever's down there, it's Matt again checking in. <laughs> At long last. I'm up here just outside the top of the world and I found something, something I think could be game changing. Don't ask me where I got it. I just need you to send backup up here quick. The best guns you can spare. Call me back at this frequency as soon as you can. Madigan out. And there we go. Into the fire has been completed. There we go. We are now a fire breather, people. <laughs> and that is, I suppose, the end of all of the really early stuff that we've got to do. The next thing, hey, we even got a level up right there. Is that a level up? Indeed it is. Okay, let's let's end this video on a level up. What are we going to pick? Now again, level 14, there's nothing essential, but there is one thing which is very nice. We could get um, colon nuts. That is a nice perk you can get, because some of the Nuka codes are actually genuinely really good, very fast healing items. But you know what? I'm thinking we're going to go for a point of maybe intelligence now. We're going to go for a point of intelligence and we're going to start to get gunsmith up. Because I would really like to get some of the good guns sooner. So if we just go and do that, then we can actually rank up gun nut right there. And, you know, we can put that on whenever we need to make our guns and stuff. And technically, you know, they do actually reduce the amount of time they take to well no it actually makes it so you don't have to heal them as much to to repair them even for god's sake okay so everyone thank you very much for watching this video we are now a fire breather let's take off this outfit you know nothing screams noob like someone wearing a fire breather outfit <laughs> So thank you very much for watching this video. We have done the fire breather stuff that is really really cool And we got a lot of XP out of it We got some cool levels in and we also got ourselves inoculated from the scorch plague What I think we'll do in the next video sounds crazy people But we might actually make a little bit of a trip into Lewisburg and start the van load taxidermy quest now I'm pretty certain 
that seems suicide to many of you. And to tell you the truth, it might be. But if we do that, then that is, some of those early quests actually are pretty safe and pretty easy. And it means we should get some XP. Hopefully enough to get to level 15. And then we'll be able to go and get an anti-armor hunting rifle. Which, hopefully, with a suppressor, will be something that we can use for quite a while in the game. It'll be game-changing if we can get that gun. So thank you very much for watching. I've been the final render. And you've been the audience. Remember to subscribe to the Final Render channel to check out more of these permadeath videos. They come out every Sunday. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye, gang. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you to all of our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. Special thank you to our Level 3 YouTube members, which currently consists of Psycho Girl, Katrina McKenna, and Raven's Roost. <laughs>